Our Father, we come before you this morning and we thank you for your goodness and for your mercy to us. We thank you, Father, for the privilege to serve you, to live for you. Lord, we just ask that you would fill us with your spirit, that you would give us wisdom. Lord, we pray for our enemies, Father, those that would destroy your work and your kingdom. Lord, we just ask you to have mercy upon them, Father. Father, we again thank you for all that you do for us. Help us to be faithful. Give us the words to speak. In the name of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> all right. I want to greet you this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The, whenever we say that, it's not just a phrase. It's not just something that sounds good. It's, it's in the name of is in His Spirit, in His in His uh, uh, likeness, if you will. Not just a just a phrase, but but coming to you representing the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I was blessed this morning by the things that were said. The verse there in Psalms that, that was in the young boy young children's lesson at verse one night or Psalm uh, 114 in the Septuagint verse 4 it says then I called upon the Lord's name O Lord save my soul I just thought about that this morning save my soul and then, I, then I heard about the idols the admonitions the, the verses about the idols and you know all we're going to save is our soul. Sometimes we've got this idea that we're going to really, we're just going to take a whole pile of rewards with us to heaven. But the Bible says that the righteous will scarcely be saved. The righteous, in Peter it says, will get their soul saved. We're looking at ourselves like we're really doing something. Like we're really going to be somebody. We're really going to impress God. But all we're going to get out of this is our soul is going to be saved. That's all there is. We're not, we're trying to hold on to anything. We've got an idol. That's all there is to it. If we're trying to hold on to our own righteousness, our own reputations, our own whatever we think that we have, we've got an idol. We, we look at idols, you know, we think of idols as, you know, we, don't, we really don't have a lot around us. You know, it, if you go to an Indian nation where they are Hindus, they've got idols set up in the middle of town. And people offer things, bring things to them. They're trusting in their idols and their religion. The closest thing we have to anything like that is in the Catholic Church. They have their, their replicas or the Eastern Orthodox Church where they've got their... their their uh, icons set up and they, they go and they pray in front of them. Somehow that's supposed to be alright because it's got Christ's name in front of it. But it's still the same thing. But that's not the idols that we deal with. The biggest idol that we have is ourselves. Let's turn in our Bibles to Mark. Chapter 8. I know that this verse, everyone in the world can quote it. That claims to be a Christian. And it's probably one of the least actually applied or understood verses that there is. Mark chapter 8 
verse 34. And he summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone wishes to come after me, if anyone wishes to come after me, how many people claim to be Christians in the world today? And right here, Jesus gives the very heart, the very foundation, if anyone claims to come after me. He said there'd be many making that claim. What, what astounds me is how many people name the name of Christ, say that they follow Jesus and completely disregard what he says, completely disregard his words. Not just His commandments, where people have made that into an idol, but what He's saying, the spirit of what He is saying. The, like I said in His name, the representation, the reflection of who He is. Not just a dead law, but the actual manifestation of the representation of Christ on this earth. If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself. Deny himself. You know, there's a lot of people that try to punish themselves. There's a lot of people that try to... Uh, put real hard restrictions upon themselves. There's a lot of people try to restrain themselves. But is that what he means by deny yourself? It's not at all. Deny yourself is to deny your life. To deny what you want out of life. The next verse says he must Take and take up his cross and follow me. Take up his cross and follow me. What does that mean? What does that mean? You know, I asked a man last night what that meant. That came to preach against us that came to fight against this message I asked him what is your cross and I've asked that to a lot of people what is your cross and I asked that question to you and you know when most people hear that it puts a fear in their heart because they don't have a clue of what it means not one iota of what it means Scares them to death. What does it mean to take up your cross and follow Jesus? This man I asked last night, what's your cross? You've got all the answers. You're against us. What is your cross? And he said, my cross is following Jesus. This is a guy who studies the Bible every day. Who can quote it back and forth. Religious. Appears perfectly righteous to the world. And he told me that his cross was following Jesus. Is that the spirit of Jesus? The last time I saw, following Jesus was the greatest privilege there ever was in this world. It's not a cross to follow Jesus. It's the most, it's the most, it's the greatest privilege that we could ever obtain to be a follower of the Lord God Almighty. 
to be a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. What a great blessing and a privilege it is. And this religious hypocrite thinks it's a cross. How devilish. But that's what he thinks. I, I told him, I said, it's a privilege to serve Jesus. What are you talking about? I ask him again, what's your cross? Well, my cross is keeping his commands, he said. Keeping the commandments of Jesus is a cross to you. The Bible says that his commandments are not grievous to us. It's a privilege to be able to live and follow Jesus. I've preached to people about the cross, whole groups. I mean, a, a Bible study, 300 people. And I talk to them about the cross. And the bishop of this Mennonite church stood up and told me that the standard was the cross. Right in front of everybody. I told him, no. You don't know what the cross is. And you're a leader in the church. How can it be that a leader in the church knows nothing of the cross of Jesus Christ? That is the qualification for the leader. That's why there's groups that don't have leaders because there's people who don't know what the cross is. So what is the cross? What is your cross? Most people couldn't tell me. I'd say most of you couldn't tell me. The cross. If, any wish, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. That, if you don't know this, you don't know nothing. You don't know anything. If you don't know this, because this is what following, it is what it requires to follow Jesus. This is what is required. And it's, you know, if we had a military and we trained the, and, and we didn't train them how to do anything. We didn't teach them the very foundations of what a military is supposed to do. You'd have a bunch of little sissies running around in it. They wouldn't be an army to defeat anybody. They'd be a bunch of little sissies. It wouldn't be a military because you missed training them in to be men, fighting men. To be at war. That's what the military is for. That's what the job of the military in a, in a world of government is for. To blow things up and kill people. And if you don't train them to that, they're not the military. They're the Girl Scouts. And if you don't train a man to take up his cross, deny himself and follow Jesus. You don't have a Christian. You don't have a follower of Jesus. Let's turn to Matthew or John. Oh, let me see. Maybe I'm needing Matthew. Matthew 26, I'm sorry. Matthew 26, verse 31. Then Jesus said to them, Jesus had just communed with the brethren. They had finished the last, the Passover, the Last Supper, 
They just finished it. Communing with the brethren. They sang a hymn and they went out. Then Jesus said to them, You will all, Peter, James, John, the disciples, these great strong men, he said, you will all fall away because of me this night. Because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike down the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered. Because of me. This is why they all failed. This is why they were all struck down. This is why they were all scattered. Because of me. You see, Christianity is about Jesus Christ and being in His name and being in His Spirit and being of Him and representing Him. And the world hates Him. And the world will plot and scheme and try to destroy Him. And anyone who tries to walk with Him. Anyone who tries to walk with Him. They don't understand. They don't know. And they'll try to kill Him. And they'll do anything they can. They'll, they'll imitate Him to try to mock Him. They'll try to do anything they can to tear it down. You know, sometimes we quote Bible verses, or I, I quote Bible verses. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, it says that His Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God. The Spirit of Christ bears witness with our spirit. You know, whenever I first began to read the Anabaptist, the, the men that were persecuted, for living for Jesus. When I read the early Christians, the ones that were suffering, that took up the cross, that knew what it meant, my heart just was inflamed because I know, I knew what they were talking about. My spirit was the same spirit as theirs. When I read about Christ and the apostles, my spirit bears witness with them. It's not, you know, we're taught that, well, I know I'm saved. I know I'm saved. I know I'm a Christian. That's the Spirit bearing witness. Baloney. Hogwash. That's not the Spirit bearing witness. The Spirit bearing witness is when you're of kinship with that Spirit. And we tell people, well, this is what they did to Jesus. Whenever we go through something and they say, oh, Oh, you're comparing yourself to Jesus. What's going on around here? Well, we better be comparing ourselves to Jesus. We better be of His Spirit. Because <coughs> the only thing uh, that's left is whenever you examine the people that are saying that is a thief and a robber and a destroyer. And a liar. And there's a spirit behind all of that too. It's the spirit of Satan and this world. That's how you tell. Whenever you go through things and your life is... The problems, the struggles, the trials, the cross that you're bearing is reminiscent of what Jesus went through. You're of His Spirit. Because of me... You're all going to be offended tonight. Do you begin to see a cross? Do you begin to see a cross? Jesus said, 
If you give a cup of cold water to a righteous man, you will not lose your reward. What's he talking about? Does that mean anybody that just goes around and gives somebody a cup of cold water is not going to lose their reward? No. If you're in kinship with that spirit and you can be associated with it and you can have fellowship with that and you'll stand by that spirit. You know, we're not all Paul's. We're not all Peter's. We're not all going to go through the same things. Not everybody's going to see your cross like they will some others. But if you're in kinship with that spirit of that cross and you bear the shame and you bear the reproach and you bear what it looks like and you deny yourself and you lose your reputation and you lose your opinion of yourself and just stay near that me that Jesus is talking about. There's a cross in that. It's not glorious like we think a cross is. But let me tell you something. A cross is not glorious. A cross is not a gold little image you hang around your neck. A cross is not something you hang up on a wall. A cross is not something on top of the steeple that looks beautiful. A cross is the nastiest, filthiest, cruelest thing you can ever see. And it'll kill you. And that's its only purpose. To lose your reputation to lose your life you get on a cross to bear the stink and the reproach of Christ you know the Roman mob came out to look for this man wasn't a happy little reception party. They got torches and pitchforks and clubs and spears and everything you can imagine. Are you going to stand with him? When the whole town's come out? Are you going to stand with him? The disciples didn't. They took off running. They failed. They failed him. But they wept their eyes out the next day. They cried and they mourned for days after that. What are we going to do now? They took him and we failed him. But guess who he came back to? He came back to those who failed him those that stood by him as weak as they were they stood by him it's not about our great performance in this Christian life I've tried that been all over the world I've done everything that you can imagine but the glory's in the cross there's no there's nothing that we're going to take. We're going to get out of here with our soul. And the only way we're going to get out of here with our soul is if our soul is united with the Spirit of Christ. And you're a part of the, the little group of people. The despised, the rejected, the hated. That just dares. Just to follow that Spirit. And to be a part of it. To be a kinship with it. You will all fall away of me this night. For it is written, I will strike down the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. He knew they had failed. He knew they were weak. But he didn't even think about that. He just told them what was going to happen. And he said, but I'll come and find you. I'll come and find you. What's the cross there? What's the cross there? Being perfect? No. It's having kinship. 
It's having fellowship with this one that's despised and rejected. And he said, I'll come and find you. Look at how he treated them. I mean, one of the things that's going to be so amazing is how good God is. People talk about how good God is so they can excuse their life and live however they mock Him. But when they see how good He really is, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. But Peter said to him, even though all may fail, fail because of you, I will never fall away. Well, right there's, right there's a recipe for a disaster, isn't it? I'll be true to you, Lord. That's just like saying, Lord, why don't you let Satan try to test me? See if he can destroy me. I've got it. Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you that this very night before a rooster crows, you will deny me three times. This is Peter. This is Peter. Judas sold him. He denied him. And he sold him. He chose to believe a lie. Peter said, at least I'm going to try to stand. Jesus said, you won't. And he failed. He failed. What is the difference between Peter and Judas? Peter recognized that spirit. And I, although he was weak, he wanted to be a part of it. Judas was ready to sell it out. First chance he got. Peter said to him, even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. All the disciples said the same thing too. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, sit here while I'll go over there and pray. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and distressed. This is Jesus. Not happy-go-lucky, grieved and distressed. And he said to them, My soul is deeply grieved. To the point of death, remain here and keep a watch with me. And he went a little beyond them and fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet, not as I will, but as you will. Where's his cross? Where's his cross? That's what we're talking about. Is it being tempted? Jesus' soul was deeply grieved. And he said, Father, anything in the world but this. Take it away from me. I don't want it. I don't want to go through this. You're getting close to a cross if it's the thing you don't want to go through. You're getting close to a cross. Jesus was getting close to a cross. He said, I don't want to go through this. I don't want to do this. This is Jesus. He was in the flesh, tempted in all points, just like you and I. People say he wasn't tempted. People say, well, they deny the very existence. So they deny him coming in the flesh. They're deceivers and antichrist. Christ came as a man. 
and he was tempted. And if you're going to bear your cross, you are going to be tempted. You're going to be tested. You're not going to feel very holy. A man with a cross isn't a self-righteous man. A man with the cross is trying to get out of this world with his soul being saved. And that's all. That's all. Take this away from me, Lord. We met another man on the street last night. His wife, 22 years, left him. And he said, pray with me. Pray that God would bring her back. And I said, he said, there's a lot of verses that if we'll just ask, the Father will give it. I said, no, you're missing something, friend. God's not going to go against your, uh, another man or person's free will. They're not going to, he is not going to do it. Jesus didn't pray, Lord, save the world. He said, Lord, keep them. Just help them. Stand with them. We told this man, you need, the purpose of prayer is not so God will change somebody else's mind. The purpose of prayer is to get your will lined up with God's. Yeah, I don't like the situation that you're in. It's horrible. All you can do is come to the Lord and say, Thy will be done. Here's where we get to the cross. To take up your cross is to Maybe not like it. Maybe not want it. Lord, they'll talk bad about me. Lord, they'll... To take up your cross is to say, I'm going to be in fellowship with your spirit regardless of the outcome. Regardless of the outcome. I'm going to walk in the spirit. I'm going to... Be faithful to the Spirit regardless of what it costs me. Your cross is the result of the things that come upon you for following Jesus, for being a part of that Spirit. And it's not fun. It's not a blessing. Jesus, sweat drops of blood. Lord, take it away from me. Three times He prayed. Take it, take it, take it. But three times He said, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. I'll commit myself to You. I'm, I'm a part of You. And whatever this world does to me, whatever this world does to me, I'll bear it and follow you. And that's all that we can do. Not, of a, not every one of us is going to be hung upside down and crucified like Peter was. Not every one of us is going to have our head chopped off like some of the Anabaptists were. But there were people that come to their graves after they died said, I'm going to bury them. I'm going to protect them. I'm going to love them because I'm still a part of that spirit. I'm going to go to prison where they're sitting there with no food at all. And I'm going to risk fellowship with this person and give them food when no one else will. I'm going to give them a drink of water when no one else will. I'm going to stand beside them. I'm going to be their friend when no one else will. And it doesn't matter what it's going to cost me. My reputation. My family. My life. Everything that I possess. 
I'm going to be a part of this spirit. I'm going to offer my all. Until we get to there, that cross, we don't have a clue what it means to follow Jesus. Some people grew up religious. It's all they know. Living this way. It's all they know. But you get with the Spirit of Jesus. You get with the cross. You get with the Father. And there's a Spirit that comes upon you. There's a Spirit that you're associated with that the world hates. That the world will try to destroy. They'll do everything they can to tear you up. Jesus said, not my will, but thine be done. That is so simple. That's so simple to say that. And that's what it's about. That's what it's about. Because when we're in His will, we're at one with Him. And our will is not to set out to exalt ourselves and destroy everybody else. Our goal is just to be at one with Christ and walk with Him and bear the cross that He puts on. Whether it's heavy or light, just walk with Him. Some people, that's why they can't even stay places, stay anywhere. They, they, after a couple of years, it ain't exciting anymore. They got to go start something else and be something else. Instead of just being faithful. Loyalty. That's why we try to teach loyalty, responsibility to our children. If we don't know loyalty, and faithfulness to our friends. How can we ever know loyalty and faithful faithfulness to our Christ, to God? We can't. I look at us sometimes and I just think we're a mess. We're just a mess. Sometimes we look around and say, we're not really that much better than anybody else. That's not what it's about. It's about denying ourselves, taking up our cross, associating ourselves with the only thing in this world that will save us. The only thing in this world that will save the only thing that's savable in this world. And that's your soul. And to be at one with that spirit. Not many people understand this. Not many people want to. They don't like it. Because it's not simple, cut and dried, all figured out. That's what Jesus was talking about is he that hears my word. It's not just these words written down in a book and I make a law out of them. He came to set us free from those things. Those idols. He came to set us free so that we'd take the cross and that everything would pass away but our souls, faithfulness, and dedication to Him. The cross ain't a pretty thing. It ain't pretty standing beside it. 
It ain't pretty what it does. It ain't fun to be around. But the reason we're around it is because our Lord was. And that's what He's called us to do. You get the cross right, and all this other stuff will just fall into place. You don't need a council of brethren to decide how you're going to live. A council of brethren can't determine a cross for anybody except one they put somebody on. That's all that's good for. Because Jesus didn't say a council of brethren will carry a cross. He used to have a message talking about a cross with 49 handles on it, a group of people all making a bunch of rules and we all just carry that cross together and everyone's just got a little handle. That ain't the cross. The cross is for you alone you're not going to have a council of brethren when you stand before the Lord you're going to have a cross and a Christ that you've borne and that you've associated with all the rest is idol idolatry faithless idolatry Trusting in something else. Like I said, very few people know this. Very few people care about it. They think it's foolishness because it's the foolishness of the cross. It's the foolishness of the cross that the world misses. They despise. They stumble at. They trip at. They can't see it. <clears throat> they don't know what it is. Whosoever, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow. some big thing? No. It's an association with Christ and His people. It's bearing the shame and the reproach of a kinship with the living Christ today. He is alive. And the people that are walking in that spirit are His representation today. And they're of the same spirit and kinship with Him. Yeah, we might not be under a physical persecution where they're chasing with guns and knives, having to hide out, but the cross is still the same in peace or in turmoil it's just easier to see in times like that when we're looking back at them all the disciples saw was we better get out of here this is getting too rough but they still came back to him came back to him. May the Lord add his blessings. Father, we come before you again. We just thank you for your goodness. Lord, it seems times the path that you've given us, Father. Lord is strange. We don't understand, but we just ask that you'd help us be lowly servants, 
to walk in this path. Help us to be akin to that spirit. Help us to bear our crosses. Be faithful. Forgive those who don't understand this, Lord. Have mercy upon them, Father. Those who have set out to destroy, God forgive them. We just ask your blessing on your words. Help us be faithful to it. Thank you for the privilege to be a part of this church and this cross. Again, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> All right. Anyone have anything you'd like to share? It's human nature. I think it's what the Bible describes our fallen nature as being that all of us have a drive to want to be right and want to avoid being wrong. We want to look good. We want to avoid looking bad. It's central to our humanity. We seek social esteem. We want to avoid losing social esteem our nature. We all have strong suits, abilities that we use to be successful and we want to use our strong suits. It's our nature. Our nature wants to, I mean our fallen nature wants to seek to dominate and to avoid being dominated by others. That's our nature. And all of Christ's law and all that Christ taught is 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 a about denying those things that are our design. Peter said he was willing to go and fight and, and lose his life, to give up his life for Christ. Mm -hmm. And, and he, he, he was right. He meant it. He went up to the garden and he drew his sword and he was willing to fight. Peter was willing to give up his life, dominating others and avoiding being dominated. And I think Jesus saw, yeah, Peter, You'll go give up your life in your nature. But Peter, you're not going to be willing to give up your life in my nature. Mm -hmm. My nature is not to chop up to you. Allow yourself to be dominated. Do not dominate others. And when it came to that, when he was, when he was ordered to put down the sword, in the nature of Christ, he was in fear. He wasn't willing to give up his life in the nature of Christ. He, he's terrified now. Mm -hmm. But in that human nature, he was willing to die. When we're willing to die in the nature of Christ versus in our, the nature of our flesh, that's what Christ is asking us to do. To be willing to look bad, I think is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. To be willing to forego socialism. Be willing to give up. We're meaning-making machines. We all like to look at everything and label it and say it means this and, and, and give that up and, and listen to what God says something is. It's, it's to deny the very central aspects that we all have in common, I think you're saying, is, is, is the cross. And it runs deep and for all of us it's going to be expressed in ways that are unique to ourselves that only we can judge. That's what I was hearing.
Be. Be.